on June the 6th, 1944, an Allied expeditionary force will invade the continent of Europe. That day must come. In January of 1943, the Allies commit themselves to the liberation of Europe while their soldiers, sailors and airmen storm the gates of Tripoli. North Africa is yet to be won, but the combined chiefs of staff speak their distant dream to cross the channel. Return to the continent. The chiefs of state christen the supreme operation with a noble code name, Overlord. In London, a year later, the Supreme Commander Allied Expeditionary Forces, General Eisenhower, takes up the task of piercing the heart of Germany and destroying her armed forces. But across the narrow English Channel lies the ultimate barrier, Hitler's Atlantic Wall, formidable guardian of Festung Europa, the fortress of Europe. Marshal Rommel, the Desert Fox, one-time hero of the Africa Corps, commands the coastal defense. He multiplies the fortifications and sows death on the beaches for those who dare transgress. But there is no roof on the fortress of Europe, and assault from the sky begins long months before the day called deed. This is the key that unlocks the gate. Paralyze Germany's war machine. Pound the Luftwaffe into impotence. the men who must finish what the bombers have begun. Each month, the United States pours 150,000 of her young men onto the British Isles. All England becomes an armed camp, one vast depot of armament and supplies. hour, a torrent of materiel and men will be set in motion, southward to the channel, southward to the embarkation ports, southward to destiny.
it is spring, 1944. The date has been set. The hour has been chosen. Men committed to the assault are sealed in ships for secrecy. Ports, camps, and assembly points are cut off from the outside world. There is nothing to do but wait on tide and weather. Wait and get ready and keep ready. And wait and wait. depart. From different ports, the ships sail at varying intervals to arrive at the five landing beaches together. Five beaches stretched 60 miles over the coast of France. is to support the landings. Intelligence officers have warned the Supreme Commander that the airborne assault is too hazardous to succeed. But without it, the landings may fail. Eisenhower faces a crucial decision. Should he risk the slaughter of two superb divisions, or should he cancel the drop and imperil the whole invasion? He orders the paratroopers to France. amphibious assault. Of a dress parade. 
the Luftwaffe has been broken. The U-boats driven from the channel. The vanguard of 35 divisions moves unmolested toward the beaches. Warships prepare to open the assault with a barrage of gunfire. Battleship Nevada is there, torpedoed at Pearl Harbor, a flagship at Normandy. Naval guns open the Western Front. Inside Hitler's Atlantic Wall, the Nazis know what the world is not. The assault is on. Defeated in the north. Defeated in the south. Defeated in the east. The Germans have but one hope left. Destroy the invaders from the west. docks called mulberries to hide their top secret purpose. Huge hollow blocks of cement that will be sunk offshore, forming piers. Few things are predictable in war. Sometimes casualties are lightest, where heaviest losses are expected. And often the worst fighting takes place, where none is anticipated.
but whichever way the battle turns, each man must face his ordeal alone. Fifty-four merchant ships are deliberately sunk to build a breakwater that shelters the shore under its lee. Together with the mulberry units, they form a man-made harbor. Tons of supplies pour in with the invading troops, not afterwards when it might be too late. ingenuity rises to the challenge of invasion. But one factor, one all-important factor, remains beyond human control. of the German army, navy, and air force is unable to do. The worst channel storm in 80 years almost does. But the invaders hold the beaches. And in the ports of England, wave after wave is mounted to build and broaden the landings. The Allied Expeditionary Naval Forces execute their mission to assure the safe and timely arrival of troops, weapons, supplies, a mission which will have a profound effect on the history of man. This program will be interrupted from time to time to bring you the latest news bulletins as they are received in the newsroom. Keep tuned to your favorite NBC station to keep in step with all the latest developments on this Invasion Day. And now the orchestra opens the program with the revival of an old hit, Blue Room. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a special broadcast. This is George Hicks speaking. I'm now speaking from the tower above the signal bridge of an American naval flagship. And we're lying some few miles off the coast of France, where the invasion of Europe has begun. It is now 20 minutes to 6. planes release a barrier of bombs that cut off German reinforcements, paralyze German counter moves. Every road, every bridge, 
every rail line, every canal, all the way back into Germany, is smashed, isolating the French beaches. Every 75 yards, a landing craft heads for the shore and touches down. Resistance is furious from German suicide squads, but the Americans go in and hang on by their guts. of Dunkirk return to France, this time to stay. The British soldiers who beat Rommel on the sands of Africa help destroy him on the sands of Europe. Architects of invasion view their work. Eisenhower and Admiral Ramsey, commander of Allied naval forces. Commander of American naval forces, Admiral Stark. Lieutenant General Omar Bradley, commander of the first United States Army. Field Marshal Montgomery of El Alamein, commander of Allied ground forces. invasion, the breakout, the swelling Allied armies stream inland into Europe. Behind the survivors lie those who died to enslave the world. Those who died to free it. Mm -hmm.